Hi everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. We are looking at Charlie's Super XL Automatic. I believe this saw was his dad's. And so it's got some sentimental value to it. Uh, and he said that he had gotten it running, but that it seemed to be running hot. He said it smelled hot. Uh, and there's a number of things that can cause these to get hot. Uh, usually it's airflow. And there's some clues on this saw that lead me to believe that's exactly what's going on here. So this will be a fairly simple fix. But just take a look at it here first. Uh, that logo design tells me this is probably a, a 70s saw. I love being proved wrong. That G build code puts it into the 80s but uh, that's okay, it's clean. This doesn't, uh, doesn't have a lot of paint wear. Uh, one problem I can see off the bat, this is a replacement fuel hose here, and you can see it's clear, similar to some of the Tigon that I use, but it looks like it's about one size too small, and this sucker is rock hard. So I'm gonna go ahead and replace that, just on principle with with some hose that I know is uh, higher quality. Uh, the grommet is missing here on the air box. It goes around the carburetor. The air filter cover here has a pretty nice crack in it. Good filter here. Alright, so we've got some buildup inside the air box. I think this thing has run for a while missing that high-low grommet. You guys can see this gobbledygook. That's fuel, oil, and sawdust right there. Not really what you want to have in your air box. I don't see buildup on the throttle shaft of the carburetor or anything. So, I'm going to assume that it has adjusted enough to hurt the engine. I mean, that Pretty good compression. So at the very beginning I said I think it's an airflow problem. You can see on these starter fins a good buildup of gobbledygook and it's not super hard so that means at one point we've all done it. I would say multiple times the tank probably has been overfilled and a little bit spills. Well, that gets in there and that oily residue attracts this fine sawdust. Also see a huge buildup right along here. There's an airflow passage. This tank wraps around the crankcase and is held in place with three screws. But from that point behind the flywheel to out here is an air passage. And what, what lots of times will have happened is that will be plugged up with this oily sawdusty crap and therefore there's no cooling to basically the front of the crankcase. Well, when you get that buildup of garbage in there, it'll also cause heat transfer into the tank and it'll boil the fuel on these things in extreme cases. You'll be running it and all of a sudden it'll start trying to die out like it's flooding. And it is, it's actually building up so much pressure in the tank that it's overcoming the inlet needle spring over here and forcing too much fuel in it and you'll pop the cap open and you'll see literally bubbling fuel in there it's boiling so uh, I'm comfortable that it's not a fuel mix issue that he was have, having he's using true fuel uh, 50 to 1 which is more than adequate for these old guys uh, especially with the quality of today's oil and yeah we're not gonna even go into all those arguments right now but what I do want to do is pop this starter cover off and just see what we find under there. If I'm right, these edges of the starter housing are just going to be jammed with gobbledygook, sawdust, oil, fuel, all that sort of junk. So let's get this cover off real quick and just see if uh, this is going to be as quick and easy as I think it might be. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. 
Okay, I've seen worse. Get these screws corralled. And we'll take a look. I've seen worse, but this is a pretty clear indication. All of that buildup. And this is a little bit harder in here. This is the kind of stuff that'll build up and close that air passage off. I've seen this where it's, yeah, hell, quarter of an inch thick in here, but this is bad enough. This is all going to need to be scraped and cleaned out just on principle, but where our real problem is is behind the flywheel here. We can see all of this buildup right here. So we're going to go ahead and take the extra step. I'm going to pull this flywheel off and we're going to see what's going on behind it. If for no other reason it's hard to get compressed air or my personal preference of hot water to flow back there with the flywheel in the way. So, I want to clean this up and just do it right. There's too many of these old saws that have met an untimely death because of, oh, not enough, not enough oil in the mix for the tuning. A lot of folks don't realize you've got to retune. If you change your fuel mix, you've got to, you've got to retune it each time. Or this lack of airflow here. Just is a real shame to see these things eaten up. So I'm really glad that Charlie's, you know, was paying attention to, to how it ran and and what he was smelling and said, hey, wait a minute, something's not right here. And this, when it warmed up, would give off kind of a cooked grease smell, I'm sure of that. There's enough of it here. But that is completely reasonable. Ah. You have to hear me gripe about this mess of a workbench again. And Caitlin was playing here in some of the other videos, so... Now I have to wonder, did I misplace the socket, or did she? Oddly, it was put away. When's the last time that happened? It's funny, it's the flywheel here is clean. It doesn't have a bunch of junk on the fins or anything. Usually, when they get to the point of being gummed up, the flywheel's kind of coated too, but we'll see what's on the what's on the back side. Alright, and I'm sure when this part of the video is being viewed, there's going to be a lot of you guys going, oh god, where the heck do you get that tool? Well, you might find one on eBay. This is a home-like tool that was designed to pull the, the flywheel without having to take the studs out and use the flat plate puller with a couple bolts down. That's been out of production for probably 25 years now, so you're not going to find one new, can't order it, but you can still find them on eBay every once in a while. And if you work on these a lot, you can save a lot of time not having to pull and reset those. This one is going to be stubborn. There we go. Alright, well now that's not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I did actually expect a little worse. Now you can see that air passage I'm talking about. There's my pointer tool. Ill prepared. Right back here. There's supposed to be a nice gap between there that opens up to the front of the saw here and to the, the drive case side. So what I'm going to do is clean this thing out completely. Get all this crap out. Make sure the fins are open on the cylinder. They don't look terribly obstructed, but there is gunk built up to them. So that's going to mess with heat transfer and all that junk too so I'll blast this out replace the few the fuel line the, the grommet here uh, 
and I'll go get down to Home Depot and get some true fuel so that I don't have to mess with the, the tuning. It'll already be set exactly the way, uh, the way Charlie's going to be running it, and we'll come back and check it out. Okay, got this thing pretty much ready to rock and roll. Went over to Home Depot, picked up some true fuel, which is what Charles was using with it. Uh, when he thought it was getting warm, uh, so we're going to use the same fuel. I uh, did replace that fuel hose. Quick demonstration of why that shouldn't be rock hard like that. See the stress? That's the end that I had to break off the fuel filter. I'm actually thinking this isn't fuel hose. I think it's just clear line and it's, yeah, not good. Using a fuel like this that has no ethanol will definitely extend these hose lives by a lot. So, okay, let's go ahead and fire it up. See where we're at. That's interesting. I think it's the mix. I can definitely smell something that's a little different than other two strokes, but this stuff smells different than other mixes too. Yeah, it's definitely almost, almost warmed up. I would say uh, you'd have no problem cutting right now. You wouldn't have any throttle lag. Let's see if this thermal gun will behave. Doesn't look like it. Digital screen looks all jacked up. Okay, so we are. It's interesting. Cylinder temp right around 113, right by the spark plug. Feeling this battery might be taking a, a dump. One. Around 170 right there at the muffler. 
That feels like a typical saw. Again, the cylinder isn't isn't hot. Let's just see if we have any gobbledygook of some sort in the muffler. One thing we know for certain, there is nothing wrong with the piston. Let me get this. There we go. Nothing wrong with those rings. That is warm. Big surprise since it was just running, right? Yeah. I think that's actually the smell of the fuel mix here. As crazy as that is, yeah, the whole muffler smells that way, and I don't see any unusual deposits. Yeah, this baffle was is it actually stuck. This might, yeah. Like it's crimped in place, but there's not a whole bunch of deposits or anything in here. Obviously, they'd be on the back side, but you can see there's just not, not that much going on in there. All right, I think I will shut the video down again, drain this uh, true fuel out, and I'll put some of my M's oil in and see if the smell changes. I'll be damned. That's what it is. Yeah, it's cleared out. So, this stuff in a home light, Super XL from 1985, smells a little funny. It, what Charles described was it smelled hot, and for lack of any better comparison, I would agree it does give an aroma of being hot. But, you know, when I switch over to the M's oil, there we go. I revved it up a lot more. We're up to, up to 250 there. Let's see what our cylinder temperature is. Yeah, 150 by the plug. This feels normal. But I'll tell you what, I did discover one other thing we got going here. This carburetor is leaking fuel. Looks like the uh, looks like the uh, carburetor uh, metering spring wasn't quite holding there. The way the paint is wrinkled in here, I think it's been doing it for a while. So I'll go through that too, but that's what the hot smell was, I think. Contribute almost all of it to the uh, the true fuel. So I'll go through the carb, get that spring to hold the needle properly, and then Charles, uh, this thing will be ready to send back to you. I don't think there's any problem with this at all. Uh, the saw is tuned to that. That's why it was running a little different with my mix uh, than with that. You may have to do some tweaking, uh, you know, just to adjust to your uh, altitude and all that kind of jazz, but don't think there's anything wrong with the saw. It should be heading your way very soon.